What are the long-term implications of COVID-19, especially on the body and on the brain? This is what researchers are trying to figure out in the last few months as more and more data is being gathered from patients who have recovered. With us today in the studio is Roni Sharon. He's the Senior Neurologist and Director of Headache and Facial Pain at Sheba Medical Center. Thanks so much for coming to studio. Thanks for having me. Let's talk a little bit about what we do know. What are the consequences of having been infected with COVID-19 on the brain? Okay, so there's actually many consequences. Um, some transient, uh, sometimes the first symptom that people may have is a loss of smell and a loss of taste. And actually that could be an opportunity because it'd be the first thing that you can see and you can isolate people so they're less contagious towards other people. That doesn't tend to be long lasting and that tends to go away. Uh, but we also see other complications that could be more severe and more long lasting. Um, sometimes people can develop strokes, uh, little blood clots can get in the brain and it can even happen to young people. That's irreversible. That could lead to weakness on one side, trouble swallowing, trouble speaking, um, and change someone's life dramatically and completely. Those sensory changes that you're mentioning, like uh, smell and, and, and taste, um, why does that happen? Is that common with other sorts of viruses as well, or is it unique to COVID-19? So it seems like it happens sometimes in other viruses. Interestingly enough, those two things, especially the loss of smell, some people may experience it 30 years before they have the first symptoms of Parkinson's disease. So someone may lose their sense of smell in their 20s and then get develop Parkinson's in their 60s. But besides that, it seems pretty unique to the current coronavirus period that we're living in now. Much of the concern uh, that we have witnessed around COVID-19 has to do with the fact that we've heard stories from people that have recovered officially according to blood tests, but they say that weeks or months after they're still not feeling well. Um, how common is that and what sort of changes does, uh, do they have to face or their, their bodies face even months into the process? Yeah, that's really important. Uh, that's happening all the time. So people are under ventilators and they're not moving their bodies. And when you're not moving your body at all, you're losing muscle fast and dramatically. And to rebuild that muscle is very, very difficult. And people develop two things. They develop something called myopathy, where they get weakness of their muscles and their nerves are withering away as well. So they develop neuropathy, which is pain, uh, numbness, tingling, and that could have long-lasting impact, not only on their recovery because they're not moving their arms and legs, but also pain that doesn't allow them to get up, to walk and participate in their recovery. And we see that all the time. So, you know, we're expecting people, even from a short stay of a couple of weeks uh, in the hospital, not recovering for months. And that doesn't, you know, take into account all the depression, anxiety, stress of all the changes that have happened in someone's life when they've been under coronavirus. Okay. I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, your main field of expertise, which is headache and facial pain. Um, I've understood from you, from speaking to you earlier, that people or your patients have actually been reporting less of that in the last few months. How do you explain it? Yeah, for me, that's a silver lining in, in the COVID-19 period. Um, people have stressful lives. And people compromise sleep and diet and health and family for their jobs and for their work. And that has an impact on their headaches. Migraine is one of the biggest causes of disability in the world. And my main job is to tell people how to live healthier. And sometimes when you're forced to not be able to be at work and you're at home and you have time with your family and you can sleep and you work out and you can eat healthier, things put, get put into perspective and all of a sudden headaches start to go away. And the biggest surprise for me in the, this whole pandemic are patients that I've been trying to treat for years with multiple medications coming and saying, I have less headaches. I actually have put things into perspective. I'm not in traffic two hours trying to get to work. I'm exercising in the morning. And it's much more successful than any medicine I've given them. And a lot of patients are coming that way. I guess that's true for those who don't suffer from a lot of stress in this period, which is also uh, the case probably with some patients, right? Yeah, we see the opposite. So we see patients that are worried about their next paycheck and they're not sleeping at night and poor sleep definitely impacts every aspect of your health, including chronic pain. So it goes both ways. But a lot of people have really put their lives into perspective and realized what's important during this period. That's and that could be helpful and sometimes it comes out as less headaches. Last, I must ask you as somebody who suffers from migraines sometimes and they have gotten better recently. Um, 
what causes them? What have you found that causes migraines? How can people avoid them? Yeah, so it's genetic. It's almost always genetic. Uh, people don't realize it, but it's a, it's a real neurological disease. It's the number one cause of disability in the world for people below 50. You know, when you think of disability, think strokes, heart attacks, cancer, under 50, it's migraine. And sometimes it's a red flag that things aren't right. Um, for people who suffer from migraine, they know they need routine. They need to eat the right way, drink the right way, avoid unhealthy things like alcohol and stress and lack of sleep. So maybe there's an advantage because you have a bigger responsibility of keeping your body healthy. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate you coming into studio, Dr. Ronnie Sharon, Senior Neurologist, Director of Headache and Facial Pain at Sheba Medical Center. Pleasure having you in Thank studio. Thank you very today. much. Thank you.